I just want to say I don't stand behind that. It's not a mainstream sentiment. But just so you know, there's lots of graffiti about the war and the hostages. This is a feeling that some people are feeling here, you know? It's not mainstream, I would say, by any ideology, but it is something that people are feeling. Shalom, chaverim. Welcome back to another video. I'm going to try to be a little bit concise in today's video. Not a long one, kind of well thought out thoughts here. But I got a question a lot of people have been asking me, and I've also pointed this question to you guys on my community tab. A lot of people have been asking me, why did I come back to Israel during this time of war? Why am I here in Israel in the Holy Land, Israel, Palestine, dealing with all this stuff during a time of probably the most escalated war we've ever had? Um, at least what feels like it's about to be the most escalated war we've ever had. And I wanted to sort of just answer that question today. I'm strolling through the uh, beautiful, quaint neighborhood of Neve Tzedek. God, the shade of orange on this house is just something else. This is something else. I just recently finished building my own home and seeing that, oh, something sexy about that. So before we begin and scroll back to October 7th, I want to start off just by introducing myself for people who may watch this video who don't know who I am. My name is Tal. I'm an American Israeli. I've been traveling around the world for the last 10 years making videos on this channel. Recently, it's converted into more explaining to people what's actually going on the ground here in Israel and Palestine. And for this story to make sense, for me to explain this, I think we have to scroll back to October 7th. I think, like most Israelis, the 7th, I think like most Israelis, or at least most dual national Israelis like me, uh, especially ones who are abroad and not here in Israel on October 7th, um, life changed radically. So I myself was actually in a place that was extremely non-political, very undivisive place, very laid back environment. And even I felt like, and the community of Israelis around me at the time, felt like this conflict, this war, and what Hamas had did was bleeding out into every aspect of our lives, even being abroad in a sort of quote unquote non-controversial place. It's hard to explain to people the feeling, and I don't say this in a sense because I get this comment a lot, people saying that you're always playing the victim, you're always victimizing yourself. It's not really that, it's just I don't think there's a way to casually explain to you what the feeling of having this passport or being a part of this nation is like to somebody from the outside. It's, uh, it's virtually impossible to explain to people what that feeling is like of always feeling under threat or at least always feeling othered by a lot of different nations around the world. Look at this beautiful synagogue. You got the tree of life here. That's so nice. I love these little alleyways in this neighborhood. It's so cool. It's probably one of the most boring neighborhoods in Israel or in Tel Aviv, but beauty-wise, it's beautiful. There was sort of an immense amount of guilt for not being here. And I know that many people who are with me who are also Israeli felt that feeling of guiltiness for not being here with our families, with our communities during the time that this broke off. And obviously none of us knew what was gonna happen. In those first initial days where everything was unfolding and extremely chaotic and we didn't really know what was going on with our families, with our neighbors, with our friends, there was this feeling of of, of, of guiltiness for not being here. I feel like that's a feeling that's really hard to convey to people. Um, to feel oneness with your entire nation is something that usually only happens during the times of a, let's say, a natural disaster or war like this. To feel othered by an entire community of people and especially like the, the global population is something that's extremely hard to convey to people in your day-to-day -day life. When you're receiving messages online, when you're receiving messages on social media, on Instagram, on, on Twitter, on Facebook, and you're seeing horrific acts of violence put on to not just your people, let's say the Jewish people, but everybody who's Israeli. Because again, there were Muslims who died here, there were Arabs who got killed here by horrendous acts of violence. You feel this sense of immense unity, and obviously, like I mentioned earlier, guilt for not being a part of, of for missing out the carnage. And it's a weird sort of like, I'm, very, I'm happy that I wasn't here and I didn't have to deal with any of that violence directly. This guilt kept on mounting. And I think for many Israelis, many, they felt this guilt mounting as well, especially the ones who were abroad or that were out of the immediate fire zone. War has chased my family and my family's history. My grandparents were in war, my parents were in war. I've been uh, in a state of war since my birth. Israel has been through countless wars 
since both my birth, my parents' birth, my grandparents' birth, and probably beyond. My family and their history have been chased down for millennia. This theme of, of death and disaster have been normalized in my life to the point when October 7th happened, it almost felt like I kind of felt like I knew something like this was coming at some point in my life. Obviously, the tragedy and the level of the horrific things that happened are, they're never really digestible, but I'm sad to say that I wasn't shocked from what happened. And what I wasn't shocked more of was the reaction that I saw online and people's reaction to it. And it scares me that I wasn't more shocked about what happened because the immense amount of hate that Israel and therefore Jews as well, just random Jews around the world have received since Hamas attacked Israel, committed a genocide. People have come after Israel and Jews. And that's insane. Why am I mentioning emotions? Why am I talking about this stuff? Why not get to the meat of it? I say it all from the perspective of an Israeli who didn't live his whole life here and also didn't serve in the army. And so when friends and family were being called up for reserve duty and I wasn't actively a part of that, that guilt that I was talking about before has been festering for months now. And while war never comes at a convenient time, I was dealing with an ongoing project overseas that couldn't allow me to just get here immediately. And so while I've been delayed to get here, that those feelings, those emotions have been festering for a long time, for months now. I came back because there's nothing like community. There's nothing like the people that truly understand you. And there's, in my opinion, something righteous about fighting for them. And while I'm not militarily trained and I can't serve in the IDF or do that part of it, I feel like this is a big fight that needs to be fought as well. It's showing you guys what it's actually like on the inside, showing you guys the unity and the strength that exists in this country and through its very diverse population of both Jews, Muslims, Christians, Arabs, Druze, Bedouins, Hebrew Israelites, Asians, Africans that exist here. This place is so diverse and so beautiful in so many ways and what you see in bullshit social media posts are they're a major disservice to what this country has to offer and how many amazing lives it's changed and how many amazing opportunities it's created for so many people. So that's my reason for coming back. It's to show you guys what this place is like on the ground from a personal perspective. I've been coming to Israel my entire life. I've spent a lot of time here as a kid as well. I lived here for a while. The, the sense of unity and belonging I feel now here and what I see my Jewish community, my fellow Arabs who live here, my, my everyone, everybody who lives here, the, the immense amount of unity that I see between all populations in Israel right now, it's unbelievable. And that horrific act that Hamas committed, that Palestinian extremists committed against our people, have unified this nation in a way I've never seen before. And it's truly remarkable. This country and this nation are absolutely remarkable and it is truly 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 an honor of mine to be able to come to you guys weekly and almost daily within live streams and content creation and show you guys what this place actually is i i don't think that you guys know how much i appreciate this as a opportunity to be able to do this service to show my community online what this place is actually like and to break all those horrific stigmas and disgusting tropes that people have and ideas that people have about us about our people I'm out here in the fight daily every single day arguing with people online proving points and trying to show truth in history and fact as to what it actually is if I could show you guys the immense amount of negative and just disgusting messages I receive on a daily basis, your mind would be blown. And it's never been like this before. This war and the situation here has exacerbated everything tenfold. I just want to mention that this is not a mainstream sentiment, but I'm totally going to use this to clickbait the thumbnail of the video. I just want to say I don't stand behind that. It's not a mainstream sentiment. 
But just so you know, there's lots of graffiti about the war and the hostages. This is a feeling that some people are feeling here, you know? It's not mainstream, I would say, by any ideology, but it is something that people are feeling. You see all the yellow bands on these trees? Yellow band there. Yellow band here. Some more yellow bands here. And on pretty much all these trees, all around the city, you'll see people brandishing yellow bands on their cars, on their on their arms, on their bags. And that's to signify the hostages that haven't haven't been returned home yet. It's everywhere you go. More yellow bands. Bring them home. And this is all over the city. Pink was an artist who got killed on the 7th of October as well. Free pink is all over the city. This in Hebrew says, Bring back the, the hostages. Bring home the children. It's inescapable. It's all over the city. It's all over the country. And everyone's feeling it. Everyone. This event has changed our lives. It has changed the course of our history. For some people more, some for other people's less, but for what I was doing, the trajectory that I was on with my travel videos and things that I wanted to do, it's changed everything. I just want to show you guys something real quick. I'm at the uh, balcony of my, my uh, cousin's uh, house where I'm crashing right now. Just for you guys to understand a little bit of the dynamics of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, just to explain some stuff as a base. This right here is Tel Aviv, yeah? That's the Mediterranean Sea. This is sort of like the downtown beach area. The whole city extends here. When a lot of people talk about the future state of Palestine, especially after what we just experienced on October 7th from Hamas, and the idea that Palestinian extremism is rampant even in the West Bank. Oh, I might just close the tripod on my finger. I want you guys to just look do you see those mountains in the background right there? That's literally the West Bank. That's the distance. When you think of occupied Palestine, when you think about settlers, that's all just back there. Just right over there. I can see with my own eyes right now. I'm pointing at it. It's, it's a few miles away. It's about no more than a 15 to 20 minute drive from where I'm standing right now. That's the Mediterranean Sea, that's the beach, that's the West Bank. Those borders are indefensible. You cannot defend them. And without some sort of guarantee from mainstream Palestinian society that extremism will be all but gone, I don't think any Israeli in this country is going to feel comfortable knowing that right over there, where I'm looking at, I mean, Gaza is still sort of far away from Tel Aviv, you can't see it with your own eye, but just looking right there and knowing that the future state of Palestine could be right there and people could fire rockets at me right there from above ground, terrifying thought. That was just a quick side note. I want to go back to what I was talking about earlier. My plans before October 7th, I was literally going to film a series across the United States of America showing people the way of life of America, showing diverse groups of people. I was going to go to Dearborn, Michigan, into the heart of Muslim society in America. I was going to talk to the hillbillies and to the right-wingers and the left-wingers. I was going to talk to every possible group of people in America that would speak to me. Not saying that that's not still possible, but the deep discomfort that I felt coming off of October 7th to not only travel back to America, but to travel anywhere in the world is a feeling that's very hard to explain. And you may sit here in the video and be like, oh, you're complaining, you're a US citizen. Nobody would think so. It's not a feeling that you can really explain. And it's justified through generational trauma of my grandparents, my parents, my community. There have, there have been random Jews that have been targeted across America since this began. I've killed because of this. Of nothing to do with the IDF, nothing to do with being a settler, nothing to do with being a colonial. There was a dentist who was just killed in America two days ago just for being a Jew. It's those kinds of feelings that stay with you and publicly being Israeli, people knowing that I'm Israeli, it gives you a deep sense of discomfort going to talk about these topics and engage with people around the world. This, what is going on on planet Earth right now towards Jewish people, this is how you isolate people. This is how you make people feel othered. 
this is how you make Jewish people feel threatened and how you continuously make them feel that this whole society we've built here is justified. Exactly what's happening right now on the planet, this is how you do it. That's how I feel. That's the reason why I'm home again. That's the reason why I came back. It's because I truly don't feel safe anywhere else. And I say that truly. And not that it's 100% safe here because there's, there's lots of people who want to kill us here too. But at least here we're together. That unity is really important right now. <sighs> That's all I wanted to tell you guys today. I love you guys a long time. Goodbye, class.